Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. He is part of our podcast community. He has his own podcast channel with The Advisor, and he is a business planner, a very good one indeed. And he today, he wants to talk about SWOT analysis, and he wants to talk about how it pertains to many small businesses and how it can pertain to, you know, people who own like Etsy and all these different types of maybe lifestyle coaches and so forth, and how this, you know, SWOT analysis can be applied to your business and actually help you grow and elevate to new levels. So, Paul, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and explain to people exactly what the SWOT analysis is and why it could be so beneficial to so many people. Well, I'm kind of embarrassed that it took me. I, I was in my 50s when I learned what it meant. It wasn't something that I just instinctively knew. And it seemed like a lot of the people around me did. But my, like you said, my name is Paul Angel. I, um, I do business planning, accountability, coaching. My specialty is law firms. That's where I, that's where I can do my most good the most quickly because I I'm I know a lot about what I'm talking about in law firm management. But a business is a business is a business, and the same, the same remedies apply for a business that's not growing. I do the same stuff. You, okay, what does the business plan say? What went into the business plan? How comprehensive is it? Who's who's holding who accountable? Who does what by when? All those same tenets and and factors there's something in that whole process that is slowing the growth or is slowing the impact that the business is trying to make so i right. i coach businesses on how to grow but i come from a ceo background and a ceo i assume everyone knows this but i've repeatedly let, realized that no it's not true a ceo is more of the visionary in, in mm -hmm. When it's a, a small company, it's usually the owner, and it's the person who was the entrepreneur that had the idea or saw the need or saw the value or, of creating this business. And when someone brings a CEO in, the CEO is going to want to know the mission and the vision and everything about a business. And right. all of that stuff is going to turn into some goals, and the goals creates the plan, and the plan is has all the action steps and then you figure out there's kind of a, a I don't want to say it's a oxymoron but a lot of people like to say strategic planning right and it's two different things you know strategy is what we want what the outcome we want and planning right. are the steps we can control so we can plan to open an office in a nearby city yeah but does that match some sort of strategy? Do do we have a strategic reason to put an office in that city other than you like to go to that city and you want to, well, if you had an office there, it would make sense. Um, yeah. Because we don't really control those outside factors. So strategy is what we think would happen based on our knowledge and our experience and our education and either previous failures and successes that we've experienced along the way. Right. Um, but when I would start working with someone and they were like, Paul, well, what do we do? What's what's step one, step two, step three? They're speaking about tactical planning or how do we meet that objective? Okay, well, person A does one, two, and three. Person B does three, four, and five. You know, those kind of step-by-step -step instructions. When you have these internal and external, internal are things you can more or less control, external things you cannot control. So right. when you're trying to make decisions, and I'm relating this to business because I'm a business coach, but the dirty little secret that business coaches know is 85% of what we do relates to mindset. It's not about, you know, oh, here's a great spreadsheet I made, or here's a great software or a vendor or a Here's a tool that will fix all your problems. It's yeah. not like that. It's why do you keep running into the same exact brick wall the exact same way? Right. And that's where we uncover the most valuable. Because once we once we get the roadblocks out of the way, you find that what we thought were problems were just symptoms of a deeper cause. Mm -hmm. So a very long and established 
process. And this is a hack for people like myself who didn't know what it is. If there's people watching or listening who have a lot of experience in project management or operational management, they're probably going to be very, very bored with a SWOT analysis because they were doing SWOT analysis probably in elementary school. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very simple to me. It's easy. and I like easy. And it almost reminds me of how we learned our alphabet. It's a song, A, B, C, D, that kind of thing. So SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you can make a SWOT analysis on a business, an investment, a person you want to establish a relationship with. You can do a SWOT analysis on an investment. It doesn't matter. But when you're talking about a SWOT analysis, you have strengths and weaknesses. These are either the strengths and weaknesses of what you're evaluating or strengths and weaknesses of yourself. So when you're evaluating your own business, for example, this is internal. These are kind of safe, you know, assuming you're being honest. Right. Your strengths and your weaknesses. You probably know your strengths and weaknesses. You probably know your business's strengths and weaknesses, but we control them. You can get stronger or you can get weaker in, in certain areas. Opportunities and threats. That's really the outside world. That's not as comforting. That's not as within our control. Yes. Depending on our level of experience, and I equate the, the, the depending on how many times we've done it the wrong way, how many times mm -hmm. we've failed, how much of an expert are we at being able to predict what's going to happen? Uh, but opportunities are, a lot of entrepreneurs will see a hole in the marketplace. They'll see an opportunity to do something. No one else is doing this. Why don't I just build this void? Threats are what could derail the whole thing. Right. Um, you know, starting an insurance business wouldn't be a great investment if there's a political movement to eliminate private health insurance. You can't control that. that you know, really, that, that some things happen in their threats. And so when you're really on a project management level, evaluating an investment or something, you want to pay close attention to all the threats and you want to have a contingency and then a backup to the contingency because what happens? What happens if we see the evidence of the threat? What does the threat look like? What does the opportunity look like? Um, so if you back up and you look at strengths, what's what did we do exceptionally well? Mm -hmm. And most people can quickly say, I'm good at the A, B, and C. You know, they know what they do well at. And it's like the negative image would be their weaknesses. But what advantages do we have? Right. And this what advantages does a relationship have? What advantages does a business? What advantages does a a, a, um, an investment, whatever you're evaluating, um, and what valuable assets and resources do we have? Mm -hmm. if you're evaluating, I don't know, a large farm. Well, do we have equipment? <clears throat> Is it up to date? Do we have enough acres to be profitable? Because you can't have a profitable farm with a quarter acre lot in a subdivision. <laughs> you're just yeah. not going to have the volume there. Do you own the land? It's, is it yours, free and clear? You know, all of these things would be strengths and would give you strength if you were competing with someone else doing the exact same thing. Right. Um, and then when you're doing it to your business, strengths, if you're doing a good job getting feedback or getting, getting responses and finding out what your five-star ratings are saying, what your one-star ratings are saying, <clears throat> what's the theme? What do your members or, or customers, what do they what do they identify as your strengths? Right. You want to pay attention to that because sometimes there's a, a delta between what we think our strengths are and what others think our strengths are. Pay attention to that because you could have blinders in that, that category. And I've seen people have a weakness, a clear weakness to everybody in the world, but to them it was a strength. And right. it, it's it's it takes a few people to work this through. But when you're talking about weaknesses, 
what could we do better? Right. Um, what do we receive the most complaints about? What is the most frustrating aspect of delivering our product or service to the to the market? Um, what you know, some weaknesses can be fixed. Some people, some can't. If if it's a relationship and the person needs to be at least six feet tall, and they're grown and they're not six feet tall, chances are they're not going to ever fix that weakness. <laughs> you know, in the perception, it's, it's just. You can't do it. You have to have a, a, a workaround. I don't know, maybe some inserts in your shoes or do a good job selling why it's better to not be that tall. But right. we want to know where we're vulnerable. Where can someone come in and undo all the things we've built with our strengths? So they're, they're same so two sides of the same coin. They're important to be aware of. And that awareness is just like being aware of your numbers. Right. You know what your strengths and weaknesses are. You're at least equipped to deal with them. Yes. Um, so that's that's when you're talking internally. Opportunities. First thing is, what opportunities do we know about? Have we talked mm -hmm. about, but we have not addressed? That's usually if I'm coaching a business, it's one of the first questions because why not? Oh, you know, the um, interest rates went down and we're a mortgage company. Okay. Right. That's an opportunity to let the world know that the interest rates went down. We want to sell more houses and refinance more loans. We know that happened. Have we addressed it? Right. Uh, and along those lines, are there trends that we can capitalize? Because when you're in a a sandbox or when you're in your industry or, or your practice area or, or what you, where you are an expert, you will just, even through osmosis or through research, you're going to know things are happening. You're going to spot trends. Right. And those trends are opportunities. The problem with opportunities, um, and this is probably a bumper sticker, but opportunities are often disguised as hard work. Yes, because taking advantage of an opportunity, it's one thing to see it, but it's another thing to actually act on. Right. You ever talk to people who like to talk about speculating on stocks and they'll always remember when they looked at a stock when it was a real low number and it's a big high number now. They didn't do yeah. anything, but they they can remember all the, the ones that they would have, could have, should have bought. Right. Um, but these opportunities are multiplied like i've talked about experience these opportunities are multiplied when they align nicely with your strengths yes because if you're not in a position to take advantage of an opportunity you might as well not know about it right <laughs> you can't do anything about it but yeah. when you are aligned like you do have you are expecting to go spend some money on some commercials or something about your taking advantage of interest rates at the mortgage company well that's great. It, that's your strength. You've got a strength would be we have a marketing budget and we it's funded. And the opportunity is the interest rates changing. That's going to increase business. Well, right. taking advantage of the opportunity would be use your strength. Now is the time to advertise that fact. Yes. Um, threats align can align with the weaknesses. And this is this is scary. This is what this is double scary. Opportunities are scary because you can't control them weaknesses or right. i mean weaknesses you can control but sometimes you can't necessarily strengthen threats yes. they align with the weaknesses usually and you have zero control over it yeah uh, and are your weaknesses the, the the big problem with these are the weaknesses likely to make you critically vulnerable mm -hmm. you know i it, it's it they're connected but what external roadblocks like you can remove roadblocks in your orbit or in your ecosystem but you yes. can't remove them outside right um but and is there a change coming you know in in our sector or in my business or with this person what's you know what's gonna change um but I don't know, I, someone's courting a woman and they're th he's thinking, I want to have a family. Well, if the woman's in her 70s, um, that's going to be a problem. 
she's probably not the one to deliver a bunch of children. Um, mm. That it, it's just something that can't be controlled, and it's an external thing. It's probably a terrible example, <laughs> but mm -hmm. there's also economic conditions. Is it financially viable? Right. Nobody likes to to be faced with that reality that their business model, what they've been doing for a while, it's not really financially viable in the future. Yeah. You know, you just want to see something depressing. I mean, I used to work in at the newspaper back in the 90s when I was in college, you know, the mm -hmm. school newspaper. So I knew a lot of people that were in journalism and they they went on to work at local and, and they moved and they went to big cities to work for newspapers and stuff. You talk about some depressed people, like I'm still keeping up with them on Facebook. It's just like, yeah, we just laid off the sales team. Everything's going digital. We're switching this to AI. Uh, um, subscription rates are way, way down. You know, there was a time where every single house got a newspaper and every right. person read that newspaper and I don't think in the future, a bunch more people are going to be reading the newspaper more. I think right. you get, you know, so so economic conditions, things change. Technology is a big threat. Yeah. It's a huge threat. I knew people that would, would manually lay out um, typesetting and graphics and fonts to for printing. And then desktop publishing came out. Mm-hmm. You don't need a strong skill set to create typeset or create an image or create an ad or even create a logo. And now with AI, you don't even need to be artistic. You can just <laughs> plug in some props and for yeah. relatively no money have exactly what you look. This was a job that people, you know, were really, really good at. And it's just yeah. The the biggest winners in this type of analysis. And this is this is the biggest strength. This is what you look for when you're adding people to your team is threats can be opportunities. Because if mm -hmm. it's a threat to you, it's a threat to everyone that's doing exactly what you do. So that threat, who's going to deal with it? Who's going to get out in front of it? Who's going to... Um, diversify or who's going to have a side hustle or who's going to, who's going to take advantage of the fact that this threat is going to wipe everybody out. Right. Like, you know, if anybody would have known an hour before a tsunami hit the beach, that a tsunami was going to hit the beach, they would have a decided advantage over the people who did not know that. Right. It's coming. Something is coming. And a lot of times hindsight, it was obvious. How did you not know that was coming? All the signs were there. Well, you're in it. And that's, that's where the difference between that tactical management and that strategic management. Management yeah. I do is more strategic, but everything sounds good in theory. What's step one? What's step two? Right. What's step three? So this SWOT analysis turned into me like a hack. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm going to do a SWOT analysis because they're probably like I was. What does that mean? They're thinking of a fly swatter or something. Um, yeah. But I'll say, well, I mean, we need to really look at, you know, the strengths and weaknesses that we have and that our competitors have or other markets have. And then we need to pay attention to what's an opportunity and what's a threat. And a lot of right. this can be brainstorming. A lot of this can, you want to involve your team as much as possible, or at least a diverse part of your team, like people from different departments or people that do different things because they're yeah. bring different perspectives of why this is a problem. What's the biggest opportunity that you see that we aren't acting on? What's the biggest threat that you see that we aren't acting on? And you'll get some insight that you wouldn't have otherwise received. I like the SWAT because I can remember. I, I never can't remember what the S stands for, what the W stands for. And that that's helped me out on multiple occasions. Um, right. But when you go a little bit deeper, if I'm talking about um, if I'm talking about strengths in a business, I mean I, I relate everything back to business, but just know it's a wider thing. Yes. What are the critical success factors, right? Um, what gives you a competitive advantage? 
you may have a an elevator speech or a, a quick answer to a question like that. But if you don't, why don't you? What's more important to do than to make sure you know what gives me a competitive advantage? And then once you've figured out the success factors, I mean, you need customers, you need clients, you need people who want what you do or, or, or want to buy what you sell. And right. then once you know your competitive advantage, how do you, you know, finding ways to leverage the competitive advantage builds on the strengths. Right. That's usually when, when if you talk to a marketing person, a marketing person will say, okay, you do this. You are a divorce lawyer. Okay. I'm in Louisiana. You move a rock, five divorce lawyers run. They're all over the place. <laughs> Why are you any different from any of those? Right. Well, if they haven't thought about it, that might, might explain why they need some marketing help. Yeah. They don't know what's different about what they do. Oh, we specialize in this type of divorce. Okay. Now, you know, now we're going somewhere, but if you don't have a, um, I think it's a USP in sales, you know, what's your unique selling proposition? Yeah. What makes us unique? And having, I'm someone who in a previous lifetime sold advertising. You got to challenge yourself or you got to challenge whoever you're working with because yeah. everybody's going to say the same thing. They're all going to say, oh, our people are what's different about us or our service is what's everybody's service can't be better than everybody else's service. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like when you call an 800 number and mm -hmm. you've called it before. And every time you call, even if you call it every single day, the message you hear is we're experiencing a unusually large amount of calls right now. That message is all the time which means it's not unusual. <laughs> it's exactly what's expected. It's what happens all the time, which makes it not unusual. You're looking for the unusual, the unique, what's different. And maybe it's the people, you know, if, if you have a garbage pickup service and you say all of our garbage pickup personnel have at least a master's degree from an Ivy League school. Okay, well, that would be shocking and impressive. I don't know how you would parlay that and to say, this is why we do a better job picking up the trash. You know, it, it's not, I'm more interested in, do they all show up for work every day? Do they have strong backs? Are they, are, are, you know, are they considerate? You know, there's different things that make it different, but the people could be what the distinguishing factor is, yeah. But just realize, even if you're asking yourself, check yourself, challenge yourself, say, what's different about my people? Because I can tell you that whenever I would talk to someone about getting an advertiser, they say, oh, we, what's different about your business? And they say, our people, what's different? And then I would immediately point out, you know, I had the same conversation with your competitor and that's exactly what they said was different about them. So you're really exactly the same as them. And you're trying mm -hmm. to distinguish yourself. It, it just like anything else, you've got to get really honest with this stuff. But when you're when you're honest and you uncover what your strengths are, yeah. strengths could be we have a smaller footprint, but we know our territory better. Or our strengths could be we have an office in all fifty states. What is your strength? What makes you different from yeah. all the others that do what you do? And weaknesses. This is what puts you at a disadvantage. And you're not doing yourself any favors by ignoring these because they come up. In fact, this might be what your competitor is saying about you to right. convince them to go with, with them instead of you. So yeah. it's crucial to identify these. And just like with strengths, honesty. I mean, a lot of your friends, but not to yourself and not to your, not to your, your potential clients and customers. Right. Identify these, the earlier you identify your weaknesses, the sooner you can start to either fix them or build your whole narrative or your story as to how we accomplish more with less or whatever. But right. this requires really candid and detailed analysis. And 
it almost requires someone from outside the organization. This is this this whole SWAT thing is is just um, it really underscores and explains the whole explosion in the coaching business and why so many people are are benefiting by having coaching and so many people are becoming coaches and so many people are hiring coaches. It's because in small business you get caught up in the drama. You get caught up in the minutia. You're in the weeds. You yeah. can't see, you know, three moves ahead. It's, you know, you're playing checkers. And everybody else is playing chess. Or if you if you ever played pool with someone who's really good, they're right. not worried as much about the shot they're about to take as what's going to happen, who you're going to shoot at, and then what they're going to do after they all of this is, is layered on top of each other. So when you're, when you have someone that comes from the outside, they don't have a filter. They don't understand. Oh, that's a sacred cow. We don't talk about that. Oh, that, yeah, no, nobody does that. No, they don't care. Yeah. They're just looking at the, the strengths and weaknesses. So this is internal. And these are things you can either control or mitigate. Right. You improve your strengths. You can, you know, weaken your weaknesses, but it's a lot easier to get people to act in this space because people, especially business owners, like to have control. You can control your activities. You can co control your actions. You can open a location. Yeah. Not just because you open a new location doesn't mean you have a strategic planning. It just means you you executed a task. Right. Having a plan is usually based on either increasing a strength or decreasing a weakness or some sort of work around reach, some kind of way to attack that. When we get external, when we're talking about opportunities and threats, you want to be able to pinpoint openings in the marketplace. That's, mm -hmm. there, there's openings. I On my podcast, I had someone, and when he was in college, he didn't have a washer and dryer in his apartment. So he had to go to the laundromat. And... It was the 80s. He was addicted to Pac-Man. And he didn't want to study in a laundromat. He thought that was lame. But he had to stay there because you don't want to come back and find out someone stole your jeans and your underwear and your socks. And now you've got, you got to go buy new stuff. So you got to stay in there. And to go there, back in the day, you had to show up with a couple of rolls of quarters. Like they didn't have necessarily the change machines like they do now. And yeah. You couldn't use dollars or a credit card. It was... You were sticking quarters in these machines. So, so there's a people, a bunch of people here with nothing to do and a bunch of quarters. <laughs> Why wouldn't they put a Pac-Man machine in here? I mean, he's thinking Pac-Man because he loves Pac-Man, but any kind of video game would do well. There you have a captive audience. Well, right. by the time he graduated, he had gone to auctions and, and bought used machines, any game he could get his hands on, and he would rotate them around and he had a thriving business with dozens and dozens of of washeterias all over the place because he found mm -hmm. that usually if there was a washeteria, it wasn't uncommon that whoever owned it also owned a dozen more or more. And right. he his proposal was, hey, I'm going to put this machine in your store and I'm going to split the money with you 50-50. And so every other day, you go in there, take a few hundred dollars out and split it with the owner. The owner's like, I don't have to spend any money and it's just extra cash. But for him, right. he paid off. All, he didn't have any loans. He he bought a new car. He had a much nicer apartment. In fact, he wasn't going to wash interiors anymore because he had a washer and a dryer. <laughs> but he <laughs> saw the, the opening in the marketplace. He saw the different factors there. And not everybody can see that. Yeah. There's, you know, there's some people, they can go into a house that's not finished with studs up and they can imagine how it's going to be decorated. Yeah. Other people, they can't imagine it until after it's decorated. <laughs> they just cannot see things that aren't there. But this is a huge advantage for opportunities because when your opportunities align with your strengths, you're going to succeed at whatever it is you're evaluating. Right. Um, also, not just being able to see the openings, but fluctuations, trends. What is the mm -hmm. opportunity if interest rates go down and you sell mortgages? Well, right. That's obvious. What is the opportunity if interest rates go up? Do we just say, oh, well, we don't sell anything? Right. No, I've seen some pretty ingenious marketing plans where say, yeah, they're up, but they're not finished going up. 
So yeah. in the future, you're going to be mad you didn't do it now because it's going to be up and up, you know, understand that there's trends. You know, yeah. I can remember when 9% was a good mortgage rate. Right. I also remember when 2% was a good mortgage rate. With the way the prices of homes these days, that 7% is a, a lot of money over 15, 20, 30 years. But yeah. understanding those fluctuations and understanding how things move and that's an opportunity. And, mm -hmm. you know, do your strengths allow with it? And then you may uncover lots of opportunities. Timing is everything. Which opportunities are right for me at this time? Right. Um, someone told me that they had an opportunity to buy a house. The house is worth $1.8 million, and they could buy it for $600,000. Sounds like yeah. a great deal. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get approved for a $100,000 house. Wow. It might have well been $60 million. There was no way that he could take advantage of the opportunity. And it doesn't matter what the opportunity is. If it doesn't fit this situation in this circumstance, don't just because it's an opportunity doesn't mean it's an opportunity that can benefit you. Right. So you need to be able to, there's some discernment, but, but you can understand where this is a, a, a tactical tool. This is, you know, you can have a group together. You can draw a big square. It looks like a window. And you can put S, W, O's, and we can brainstorm and we can really get some work done. This yeah. is tactical. But it involves some visionary, some some knowledge, some strategic knowledge to really get the most out of this exercise. But the you know, this opportunity at this time makes the most sense. Right. But this is this is when you know you've got people probably on your team that you've never asked questions like this. But I can tell you, I'm talking to workers at a company, they've solved all the company's problems, but nobody listens to them. Right. Most of the time, they're not right. They don't know the whole story. But it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. You know, there's a reason they're on your team. There's a reason they work at the company. There's a reason you hired them and didn't fire them. They, right. They're, they're, they're useful. They're, they fit They fit the culture. Now, threats like opportunities, market fluctuations, regulations, public perceptions. Yeah. Um, you know, there's things... 10 years ago that people did all the time that if you did them today, you would be canceled. Mm -hmm. What the, what the general public will tolerate is wildly different than it was 10 years ago. Yes. But you're not Nostradamus. If you say 10 years from now, what people will tolerate will be completely different than what it is today. Right. And being able to see what threats are down the road. We know that technology is, improving at an alarming rate we've seen yeah. businesses you know you don't have to be a genius to know that book binding and um newspaper printing 10 years from now will not be bigger business than it is today yeah that's some of the obvious things but what jobs remember when jobs got replaced by computers or robots mm -hmm. what jobs are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence right don't get me started. I'm totally paranoid about the robots. I think <laughs> was a documentary and we're just going to find out. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think the kid, Sarah Connor was born last year in, in the, <laughs> in the movie. So we're coming up on it, <laughs> but things are going to be very different. I mean, yeah. uh, you and I talked about, you know, writing books and writing books used to get you on TV and in all these things. Now, a book comes out and they're like, oh, another book, <laughs> you know, that used to just open so many doors. Well, podcasts have kind of moved into that space. So that's what I've seen. But yeah, I'm also noticing a lot of people starting to have podcasts. I'm mm -hmm. one of them. You know, a lot of people are starting to have podcasts and yeah. some of them are really, really good. Right. In 2021, I was on three or four podcasts. It was a big deal to be on a podcast. That was amazing. Now, this podcast happening all over the world. We're on one. <laughs> I'm, I recorded one this morning. I'm, you know, th that's just, so the impact that podcasts are having, what's going to replace that? Right. How's artificial intelligence involved? 
And what about yeah. newspapers and, and all of these things, where your space is and where you're working, how do you strengthen it? And when, when you have the benefit of hindsight, when we think Blockbuster was just a bunch of idiots, how, I mean, come on, you know, rent, nobody wanted, I remember getting Netflix and they would mail me the little DVD and I'd get it in the mail and I, no late fee, I could keep it as long as I wanted. And I would just put it back in the mailer and send it back to them and they would send me something else on my lift. And that was how it worked. And then they started with, you could go online and see it. And I can remember, and this is less than 10 years ago, but I can remember my wife saying, oh, but there's more and better titles available on disc than online. And I remember thinking, that's not going to be the case very long. Why would they limit it if it's, if, you know, if I can have a hundred people use the same exact product all at once? Yes. Why would I limit myself? I'm like, these, these DVDs are going to go away. Yeah. But at the same time, we were using... Uh, there was another product. It was like a Coke machine full of DVDs. They called it Red Box, but there was a bunch of different things like that. And they were yeah. a dollar. And you didn't have to, you know, you didn't have to get dressed up or go in a store or, or you just put a dollar in it and it gave you a movie and they chart, they zapped your card if you were late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. even, even that went away. I mean, I don't, I, I was dusting the other day. My DVD player is full of dust. I don't think we've used it in five years. Unless yeah. we found some old DVD and we didn't know what it was. We, so we had to blow on it and, <laughs> and put it in the machine. Mm. But what's going to be different? You know, all this on-demand stuff. How are things going to be repackaged? There's opportunities, but there's also threats. So, yes. you know, some people can reinvent themselves. Some businesses can reinvent themselves. Well, the ones that reinvent themselves are the ones that spit time and thought about what's 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 going to change what market fluctuations are coming up yeah who's who's going to who's going to not be around who's going to be the winners and losers if um if this person gets elected or if this person gets elected who's going to be the winners and losers if this technology comes or if they're if there's they invent a pill that cures cancer instantly well, there's a bunch of businesses that have all these chemotherapy machines that are big business right now. Well, if you make that obsolete, how could they survive? Right. You know, what's what's the threat? The technology is always a threat. Regulation is a threat, but public perception is is a big one. Yes. When you identify threats that you can actually counteract, counteract or predict because of your strengths or weaknesses. That's why this exercise is so helpful. I think yeah. people should do a SWOT analysis, involve the team. SWOT, SWOT analysis, I love the whole brainstorming thing because you start to find out that maybe a team member that you didn't have didn't think had much to say actually had a lot to say, and it was good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let their next employer be the person that uncovers how useful their information was right mine your your team and so it's a really excellent exercise in my opinion because one it's easy to remember swat yeah w-o-t but it's i mean it's it's a strategic planning tool and it's used by high level project managers and we're talking about people that that manage you know billion multi-billion dollar projects right they're just doing like a b c they're doing strengths weaknesses opportunities they they take a piece of paper and they draw a plus sign and it's the four quadrants. You got your strengths and weaknesses and you got your opportunities and threats. So the top is what you control. The bottom is what you don't control. The left is good. The right is bad, but the real winners in the whole exercise are the people that find opportunities and strengths in the weaknesses and threats. Like a hurricane's coming. That yeah. stinks. Well, not if I'm selling generators. <laughs> you know, there's an opportunity in everything. And right. the people who see the opportunities, those are the people that you read about 
you know, uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, you know, Thomas Edison, you know, Henry Ford, they, they saw this was changing. Yes. There was nothing wrong with the horse and buggy. Nothing was wrong with it. It was a good system. People had invested lots of time and money and expertise. But once they got the price of the horseless carriage, which I think is what they called it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I have horses and horses are expensive. And what's funny is my, I remember my grandparents were used to say that people who had a horse once the cars came out, the poor people still rode a horse and the rich mm -hmm. people had cars. Well, now, if you have a horse, you've got to be rich. <laughs> so like the poor people have cars, the rich people have horses. It's, it's, it's flipped. But how did that happen? How did, how did it, the people who cared for horses, I mean, can you imagine what a big deal it was to be a, a barrier that fixed the shoes on a horse? If everybody, yeah. that was the means of transportation. Right. It's still a profession. I right. pay one every other month. <laughs> it comes to my house and puts, fixes the horse's hooves. Yeah. But it's more specialized. It's more of a boutique thing. Um, when you see in a small town, when a big giant grocery store chain comes in and that store that's been there for 80 years, they either close or they become some sort of boutique with, you know, a specialty butcher shop or a cheese yeah. or, or, or breads or, you know, local cuisine or something. Or they just go out of business and all their employees go work at the big box grocery store that moved into town. Mm -hmm. But you've got it. You can't innovate if you haven't really paid attention yeah. to what's out there and to what's what's next. So I love this tool. I'm so grateful that I was part of a of a it was a, it was a brainstorming session. And someone said, yeah. why don't we just do a SWOT analysis? And I was like, WTF, what are you talking about? I don't know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and yeah. everybody was saying it. And I felt like the idiot, like everybody knew what that meant. And I didn't. So right. my tendency is if I don't know something and it, it's clear that other people do know it, Must I can learn about it. And so then I, I learned about it. I saw the features, advantages, benefits of doing these SWOT analysis all the time. I went from not knowing what it was to less than three months later, preaching the gospel about SWOT analysis and why they were so important. And they were a part of my process every single time. And it, it got stronger and it got stronger because whenever I would do it, there would be all these unintended consequences or all these unexpected results would come out of it. Like you find more out about your team. You mostly good, but sometimes bad, but either way you want to know. Yeah. Find, you know, what gaps exist and what, how can we, how is that an opportunity? Right. You know, some people on your team, they might not be the best employee you have. They might not be the smartest and best educated. They might not be the best, but when you ask, how is this terrible news an opportunity? They might be the ones that just drop some thing that should have been obvious that nobody else could figure out. So you right. really find out strengths, weak, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within your team, within, you know, above you, below you, everywhere. But it's it works. Financial analysts do SWOT analysis on, on investment funds. They do SWOT right. analysis. I, I know relationship counselors do SWOT analysis. What's the benefits of this relationship? What's the, what's what's good? What's bad? What's What's yeah. the threat? I mean, what's what's the opportunity? How can we make it better? Or should, you know, once you do the analysis and you're honest and you're deep and everybody's involved. Yeah. The answer might be, we need to shut this business down. It's hopeless. Right. Okay. Well, it didn't take three years to learn that. <laughs> you're probably yeah. way better off shutting it down right now if that's inevitably what's going to happen. But right. when you have time to prepare for something that's coming, it's like where I live, we get hurricanes all the time. Yeah. And preparing for a hurricane is like being stalked by a turtle. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, they updated, it moves like 50 miles in a day and it's a thousand miles away, but it's coming and you know, it's coming. And, and so you, you go and you put all the 
boards on windows and and you go and and get sandbags and you you clean up all your crap that you haven't cleaned up outside and make sure it's all secured you bring in all those potted plants all the all these steps that you we know how to do because we have hurricanes every year yeah and then the hurricane comes and it wasn't as bad as they said and yeah that's usually dangerous because then the next time you're not as thorough and it is it is the bad one but when you see the threats coming, you we see it. It's on TV. The weather, the weather people lose their mind when there's a hurricane. It's like, oh, it's our time to shine. People are gonna watch weather now. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that's 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 a threat. That's but that's something that you can prepare for. And, right. You know, if you know it's coming, what normally happens? I've dealt with hurricanes every single year for over 50 years. Yeah. I can tell you, guess what? People aren't going to have power. That's coming. Well, right. a great business around here is generators. And not just the ones with the rope that you crank up to turn on your refrigerator. The ones right. that people hook their entire home to. My my neighbor has, I don't have one. Those are fancy. But my neighbor has one. And we had a power outage. It wasn't a hurricane, but it was a storm that was, it knocked out some, some power lines. And it was a, almost 24 hours of no power yeah you hear a little brrr going at the neighbor's house all his his floodlight outside was on you could hear music coming from in their house and we we're all <laughs> bummed out you know sitting around the living room looking at a laptop that once it dies we got to go charge it in the truck <laughs> 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 because we don't have power that you know that kind of preparation those businesses are people that saw that need. Yes. If you're in an area that doesn't have that, well, it's probably not a good business to, to you know, multiple people can be in that business and we still need more, especially when the hurricanes are coming. But right. being able to identify the threats, the earlier, the better. Because when you identified threats early, it's not, it, it stops being a threat. It turns into an opportunity. So right. the most valuable people on any team are the people who can figure out how to turn weaknesses into strengths and threats into opportunities. And I mean, you could get you can get as shallow or as deep as you want with a SWOT analysis. But I, like I said earlier, I am so grateful the meeting I was in where this came up because it became a big part of what I do. I don't I don't work with a business. If we work together for three months. We've done at least one in-depth SWOT analysis. It just, right. it, there's no way we get through, you know, three months without doing one. Right. And usually early on because it uncovers a lot. It yeah. puts things in perspective. And it's, it's just like when you hear the same thing over and over again, right. then somebody, for some reason, somebody else says the exact same thing that your mom said, exact same thing that your neighbor said, the exact same thing that your boss said. But you heard it. <laughs> yeah. And you heard it in this context when you're actively looking for, okay, my weakness. How is my weakness a strength? It's not an obvious answer, but you've got the whole village. You've got the whole team. You've got the whole staff. You've got the whole industry. You've got got the whole neighborhood whatever it is yeah you start to find out and you start to find out who's on your team who right who you have and what can they do i just i love it for so many different reasons but i i, I wanted to, to to broach it because i wanted someone to say thank goodness i was listening to this podcast because yeah. i didn't know what a swat analysis was and to the people who have been doing swat analysis since the playground in third grade I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> I know this is probably like kindergarten for you, but more people don't know what that, what a SWOT analysis is than do. And I figured this was an opportunity to, to spread that as much as possible because it can only do good. No, I think it definitely did good because, you know, I knew what a SWOT, ana a SWOT analysis was, but I forgot because I haven't, really used it in so many years that when you mentioned it i knew the term but i couldn't think about what it was because i haven't used it in ages you know like i couldn't it, it just i couldn't like fathom the details but i remember learning about it but i couldn't remember it 
you know, because it's been so long. So I think it, it's great because when you do the SWOT analysis and you have the, you know, the 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 strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the stre- this, the uh, threats, when you look at all that, you can actually, you can really look at what, you know, your opportunities, you know, from, from their, from your, your threats and from the, from your weaknesses and, and your strengths, you can see what you could actually do to even enhance your business, to grow your business, to help your business. You know, it's, it, you could do lots of things with the SWOT analysis. It's, it's, a, it's great a tactical tool. thing, right? It, it's a tech, it's a tool, but it's a tactical thing that can kind of get you out of that tactical thinking. And, you know, you're not in the weeds in the front yard anymore. You're on yeah. the upstairs balcony and you can see yes. five giant ant piles. Okay. That's a problem for the kids with the, the swimming pool. Yeah. But I can't see that if I'm, you know, worried about the edging around the mailbox or whatever's mm-hmm. going on because you're stuck in the weeds. You're not, you yes. can't be strategic. I love this because it's a tactical tool. It's a tool you would, you know, a toolbox you open up in the weeds, Mm -hmm. but it elevates everybody up to the balcony. So you're moving, you're moving projects forward. You're having some insight, you're happy, but you're, you're doing it with a strategy and you're doing it based on things you can control, both good and bad things you can't control both good and bad. But if you, if you use everybody and you use it regularly, a SWOT analysis can help. It literally could have saved Blockbuster billions of dollars. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I, I pick on Blockbuster because what are they going to do? They don't even exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they That's... they they blew it. I think there's a movie on what one of the Netflix like offered to sell them everything for pennies on the dollar, and and Blockbuster was just like, "We're the kings. You're just." <laughs> You're not even a, a, a gnat in our face. It's not even a, a speck of something that we would worry about. We're worried about, you know, the other major right. rental companies. All of them are gone. All of them. Rent videos anymore. I, I mean, you can, I think, but why would you? <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't exist anymore. Definitely doesn't. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to really emphasize on a cut couple of important points. What are some things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners today? The biggest thing is turning the negatives into positives, turning the weaknesses into strengths. That's a great, I mean, if, if you can, A, identify a weakness in yourself, mm-hmm. then once you've identified it, clarify it, you know, write a whole book about it. And then now that you've got your weakness and you've got it spelled out, how is that a strength? Right. You might have to, you know, do some mental gymnastics or bend things, but there's a yeah. way and there's a conversation. The more people you involve with that, the better. Same thing is true with the threats. Mm-hmm. Hurricane is a threat, but it's also an opportunity. Right. And that's that's the most valuable people in a strategic setting are those tactical people who can see opportunities and threats and they can see strengths and weaknesses. So The biggest takeaway is not only understanding what those four things are, but being able to see the ones that are turning the negatives into a positive. That's where true value is. And if you catch that in someone, you're the one that saw value in that employee. Right. Not the next person that hired them from you because you didn't see their value. That to me is a value that gets uncaught. Finally, someone catches it and it's like, you've worked for all these people and nobody realized that you could, you know, turn rocks into gold. Right. That's what this could be. It's, you know, putting it on your calendar, put yeah. SWOT, um, SWOT analysis, you know, the mm-hmm. second week of every quarter. Right. That's put, a it good on idea. There, put it on forever on your calendar and just have it repeat. And you get a reminder every Three months SWOT analysis. Who's involved? Right. What are we analyzing? It's 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 a, actually a complex project management tool, but it's mm-hmm. S W O T. It's not hard to remember. You can get you can just like anything. You can go as deep or as shallow as you want. Right. But I I use it in the context of business. But you could use it in relationships. You could use it in investments. You could use it in you know pros and cons of moving for a job. Okay. Yeah. 
What are the strengths of moving from New York to Miami? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities? What are the threats? You, know, you, you, you make better decisions and yeah. decisions, you know, when you have a business, to, even, even a small business, mm -hmm. bad decisions could end it. Bad decisions could cost millions of dollars. Could, oh, in yeah. the future if you don't consider it. This is just a, a nice way to compartmentalize everything and then try to kind of flip it and you yeah. know deal with what you can control and deal with what you can't. But there's value in people who see opportunities and threats and strengths and weaknesses. I, that's the one point I hammer home because that's always been the biggest. You know, when I worked with business owners or, or law firm owners. Yeah. The SWOT analysis was often when somebody got promoted mm -hmm. because of the way they behaved in the SWOT analysis. And there's like, wait, there's a diamond there. And we didn't even yeah. know it. That's, that's, that's what I like about it because someone was being wasted in their role. Right. hundred percent. And what are some of the services that you provide? Well, I do, I do business planning. I, I'm kind of a simplifier. I, I, I think, when something's simple, it's easy to do, the likelihood yeah. of it being implemented is much greater than when it's complicated. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, that, that it's obvious, right? But I, I see when, when people are trying to do things like that involve business planning or it involves hiring or involves marketing, they they really, they, they err on the side of complicated. And the, it just, it hurts the odds. So, I work with businesses and the first thing I do when I'm working with someone is what, show me your business plan. Mm -hmm. And I've done hundreds of business plans. So chances are strong that I'm not going to look at the business plan and say, this is as good as I would do right. <laughs> because no one's done hundreds of business plans. I mean, who would do that? So yeah. I start with a plan and then I do accountability coaching. The plan, the plan becomes strategic. It's based on the, the outcome mm -hmm. and but when we do once the plan's there we have an outcome how do we get from here to there well yeah this would be how we would impact our intake this is how we would market to clients this is how we would we would get clients existing clients to be bigger clients this is how we all the different steps this is how we would streamline our process so that we could we could deliver more and better services in less time which right. would make it less expensive to deliver so we could do one of two things we could have more profit or we could be much more competitive so all of these things are in a plan but they all are going to be based in that simplified master plan so when right. i work with business owners i want to know What's your purpose? What's your goals? All of those things. And we build a plan around that. And I'm kind of a motivator. I'm kind of good at getting people to 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 stay on track and to get the things done that they said they were going to do a week ago. But the reason I'm good at that is because the first thing I do is I find out what they want. What do they want? Some people are motivated by retirement. Some people mm -hmm. are motivated by by money in the bank. Some people are motivated by travel or motivated by um, being able to have rescue every animal they see on TV. You know, people have different motivations and it doesn't matter what their goals are. They could be superficial or deep or meaningful or sad. It doesn't matter. Whatever they are, they're personal. And so once I have a plan that's based on those personal professional goals, yeah, I can hold them accountable and they're going to succeed. So I've got a track record of taking small businesses and causing problems, causing problems like the expenses of growth. Like, yeah, we can't do this in the garage anymore. We're going to have to get a, a warehouse or an office or we're going to have to hire. Right. Some real full time employees that want health insurance. You know, we're going up to the next level. I, yeah. I love doing that. I absolutely that's where I have my most success. That's, and I have success because I'm outcome focused. I want the win. I want the success. I've made clients millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Those clients, some of them might've been as happy as I was about it, mm -hmm. but no one was happier. Like no one got off more on the fact that these people have a lot more money and a lot more success and a lot more fulfillment because they met me. 
that, yeah. that's awesome. I want their I want their experience and what they're doing just to be better. I don't have to be an expert in what they do. Right. But if they do a law firm, I'm kind of an expert. Like I'm really, I get hit the ground running a lot. Of time, <laughs> but it does. That's awesome. Now, where can people find you? Well, um, my company is called Law Familia. It's L A W F A M I L I A. Lawfamilia.net. Apparently, lawfamilia.com is a South American uh, daycare. Set. I can't, I couldn't have it. But <laughs> lawfamilia.net is my website. And if anybody wants to have a conversation with me, I do one on one coaching, and they can go on lawfamilia.net, contact us. There's a link to my calendar. You can schedule a one hour free coaching call, and I will talk to anybody. And I know that's dangerous and I've been warned about it, but set an appointment. I'm going to, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions about what you do and what you want. And, and I'll show you how to make a business plan. And if you're really smart and you pay attention and you've got a lot of free time, you can take everything I tell you in that one hour call and go and implement a plan and hold yourself accountable. Um, but some people don't have enough time. <laughs> they, 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 they understand the value and they, they want help. And that's the people I want to talk to. So whether it's one out of a hundred or one out of 10 or one out of two, I know right. the more people that schedule those free coaching calls on my calendar, the more my business grows. Right. And I, I find out who I can help and then I help them and then the business grows. And that's, that's what I, I love to do. Uh, also my podcast, it's called, um, it's the inappropriate growth podcast based on the fact that if you're going to grow, you're going to do a disproportionate amount of work. Uh, success stories usually have some crazy origin stories or beginnings. Um, but if you're going to grow, you're going to do something that maybe doesn't seem worth it or it, it doesn't seem logical. But if you look at every big, you know, small business or even medium sized business success story, they did something that they didn't think they could do, or they did something that others told them they couldn't do. And that's yeah. where the inappropriate comes from. It's the inappropriate response <laughs> to a problem is what right. leads to success. So I'm always interviewing business owners or vendors or other coaches to hear these, you know, some of these stories are fascinating. I, I, I love the podcast, but it it's turned out to a, a lot more exposure. It's turned out to me meeting people that I otherwise would have never met. Right. And it's I now have a stronger network. I'm on my fourth season and it's I I'm I'm never surprised by what comes from some of these. I've I've met friends that I have, I've met clients, I've met people I collaborate with, I've met people that we work in tandem where on the surface it looks like we do the exact same thing. Yeah. But as we get to know each other, we realize no, we don't. Right. This is your niche. This is my niche. This is how we yeah. can help. This person that you're trying to squeeze into your box fits perfectly in what I do and vice right. versa. And you create affiliates, you create partners, you recreate, you know, business-based relationships. I'm in the works with someone I met on one of these podcasts to create a webinar. And That's awesome. it, it's, it's, I just love the collaboration. Um, may have noticed I don't mind talking I don't like I don't have a problem with it I enjoy it but I think it's important to have something to say and to to benefit if you're going to talk a lot have something to say exactly and that's why I'm grateful for whoever slipped up and told me about the SWOT analysis mm -hmm. you know, my prayer is that someone hears it and implements it and it makes a big difference and that if that happens, I would love to hear about it. In fact, you could totally be a guest on my podcast to tell me how you heard this on a podcast and it changed something and you want to talk about it. That would I be love it. Day. Definitely. Where can people find your podcast? Where can they go to find it? Um, it's on YouTube. That's the one I like the most because I, I do upload the video. But Apple Podcast and Spotify, I intentionally upload the audio there. But I've Googled it just have you ever Google yourself? I've Googled it and I found it on all these other platforms. So I think if you're on Spotify and or Apple, other platforms get from there. So 
If you type in inappropriate growth, I don't know of any podcast that has the same name. I don't know uh, inappropriategrowth.com. I own it and I've got a little landing page there, but it's not as it's not as robust as my law familiar. <laughs> but it's um it's fun. And every time I finish the season, I'll take the like the 10 episodes and I'll um I'll make a blooper reel of from the podcast. <laughs> and that's fun. Those those are getting better and better. In fact, I think in the last couple of ones, people were intentionally doing and saying stuff in hopes that it would get on the blooper reels. <laughs> I but love it. I've seen way more views on that than some of the episodes. <laughs> I love it. This has been amazing, Paul. I love having you on the show. You give such valuable information. And I just want to say thank you for coming on today and Thanks teaching people about spot analysis. I love it. I thank you so much. You've been amazing today. Thank you. You got four more days this week to go figure out when you're going to do your next one. Because it sounds like it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, Paul. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stacey. Bye-bye. Uh,